It's evening on a Tasmanian farm. These deer thought they were alone until... In Melbourne, up to his elbows in buttery, slippery, oozing paint. Richard Feidler strikes up a conversation. They wait. Then another voice sends them scuttling. I imagine Whitlam's true believers in those early days scratching their heads trying to understand what had just happened. Lucy Turnbull's honours project was to explore the effect human voices have on fallow deer. In Melbourne, up to his elbows in buttery, slippery, oozing paint. Deer numbers were significantly reduced by the sounds of humans. By 50%, according to her research. She's hoping, in the face of an exploding deer problem in Tasmania, it will help landowners protect places of value, whether they're farms or forests. We thought that potentially it could be used as a management technique to basically as a sound barrier to keep deer out of certain areas like the Wilderness World Heritage Area. Using camera and sound devices, for nearly six months Lucy monitored feral deer on a sheep farm in Tasmania's northern Midlands. When deer were detected, on came the radio. Some young people who are taking historic court action against billionaire Clive Palmer. Lucy used the noises of sheep, which deer on this farm are used to, as a comparison. <coughs> While animal noises simply drew a crowd... ABC presenters had quite the opposite effect. Manta rays use facial expressions to greet their mates. On summer nights, I sleep naked in Jerusalem. Even when they didn't run away... Get back on the boat where I started vomiting and didn't stop for hours. It still disrupted their feeding. Three months into the project, Lucy took some of the sound machines down. That way we were me able to measure whether deer numbers recovered in the time after we removed the sounds of humans, which they didn't. She doesn't expect this technique alone will protect land from fallow deer, but on its own... All of the theories scientists have developed over the centuries... It does a pretty good job. 